All right, guys, I want to jump in here real quick and kind of explain to you guys what we're doing here now. This is a bigger part of a project here, but I had the cameras kind of set up in a perfect angle. So this is pretty much showing us, we're showing you guys what we do to close up the front of the retaining wall. So the videos are kind of out of order, but I am working on videos to uh, kind of put everything together. But I wanted to jump in here in case you guys thought you were missing something. So appreciate you guys. Remember who to ask for help. Wake up with good intentions. Everything's going to be all right. All right, what's up, guys? Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, this retaining wall slid down the hill. I don't want to say it slid down the hill. The client had someone try to come behind here, clean it out to add some drainage because there was no drainage originally, and then come to find out it kind of slid down the hill once we started having those bad rains, and plus this retaining wall doesn't have a footing. So we're going to install a pier and gray beam system. I think the piers are 12 to 14 feet deep. We're going to have about eight of them. The gray beam is 24 by 18. And the wall is going to be about, probably about four to six feet tall. So watch us work right now. First day, we're just going to be tearing it up, getting it out of here. We got to go slow just because of how close it is to the wall. Okay, so we got the rebar up. So the verticals are going 10 inches on center. Plants calls for them to go 12, but we made them 10 inches on center. Horizontals is going uh, 12 inches on center. So we got a grid of 12 inches and uh, 10 inches on center. We also kind of reinforced this corner here. We had some extra number eight. So we just put those number eights in there just to kind of reinforce the corners. And here is the grid. We... Uh, now, ideally, you guys have been seeing some of our videos. I'll leave a link down below where we poured the piers, the gray beam, and the wall at the same time. But just due to the access here, once we finish it, it's going to be about four foot two inches or four foot six inches for a sidewalk. Uh, it was kind of tight, so we kind of did it the old school way. Uh, piers came back, poured the gray beam yesterday, and we're framing up for the wall. So here is what we have here. Gray beam is already already down. That was two by two. It's supposed to be two by 18, but we made it a little bigger. And this wall is gonna be approximately seven feet. Um, it's supposed to be six and a half, six feet, but we made it seven feet because of what we have up there. It just kind of gives some extra uh, uh, space when we do the final grade there. So we're gonna overlap these bars here, about 18 inches to bring it up to seven feet. And this is what we have. So this is a pier, gray beam, and uh, wall pour. Again, this grid is 12 inches and 10 inches on center. That's what we got to hold our rebar in place. Get a lot of questions with the nails. We're going to start framing it up.
Right, so got a lot of questions or comments regarding these Simpson ties. The eight stands for eight inches, so these are WT8s, wall ties, eight inch. Um, we also have some wedges that goes along with them. That's kind of get that kind of keeps the retaining wall together as we pour. You can see this video here coming up showing us pouring and vibrating and keeps it together. And if you haven't done a retaining wall, I recommend you kind of put them 12 inches on center. Better safe than sorry. Here we're just pretty much eyeballing it. But I do get some questions regarding this, so that's why I wanted to jump in here and answer that particular question. If you guys do have some questions, let me know regarding retaining walls and I'll try to get those answered. Appreciate you guys. Let's get back to the video.